but sometimes you do something so stupid you just stop and you go I just I yeah I'm done so this last week has been a real week of ups and downs unfortunately in fact uh, I did something the other day to this Telecaster that has set me back uh, several days I'm waiting for some new material we're gonna get, you're gonna see what happened it's um yeah it was it was a very uh, humbling moment of uh, realization that I'm you know an absolute beginner at this and I'm making some terrible decisions along the way but first of all let's see something positive my first time jointing um, or joining a, a, a two pieces of wood to create the cap and this is going to be the cap for this uh, semi hollow telecaster if you haven't seen the first episode by the way please go ahead and watch here um, so let's dive straight into something that went all right this week and then later in the video you're going to see something that uh, setup the um the piece of plyboard that was on there it suddenly occurred to me might stick to, with the tight bond glue might stick to the top of um the lovely piece underneath and uh, <laughs> it took me about three minutes to realize that by the time i tried to rip it off it was half stuck and very difficult to get off so i ripped it as hard as i could it came off luckily without leaving behind any remnants of the plyboard anyway i'm off to have a couple of cups of tea come back in an hour or two see what happened okay it's the moment of truth let's uh Let's uncover this, see what's happened. And there you go. I think that's actually worked. I'm um, quite happy with that. It's a beautiful bit of wood. I am going to be painting it, finishing it. It's not going to be a natural finish and it's probably unusual to have such a figured thing on a Telecaster, but I feel like when I paint it and then relic it, some of this is going to come through. And I'm quite excited about that. So yeah. So I was really quite happy with the way that all came together and uh, really looking forward to sort of the next stages, which you will see later in this video. Actually, what I did after that was start to make the neck. Uh, you know, that really recognizable Telecaster neck with the small headstock and everything. I was really looking forward to um, cutting this out. So uh, I've got a little bit of footage here. You can see uh, how it went and then how you do it. Um, and we'll catch up uh, on uh, the, the big problem that happened in just a little while. Okay, so it's with this routing that the problem, uh, the massive uh, sort of catastrophe actually that happened later, that will happen later on, it starts here. So I'm routing the channel for the truss rod. You do that when the, the blank is still full size, so you've got flat edges to help you run the router. Now I'd specially bought a router piece from a company called Stu Mac, Stuart McDonald in the States, who, who are a massive supplier of all the sorts of guitar making tools and everything that you need. And I bought my truss rod from them, and it's called the Hot Rod Low Profile Truss Rod. They also have one called the Hot Rod Truss Rod that's not low profile. Um, so it's a little bit confusing. So I bought the router piece for that I thought was correct. It's going to turn out that it was not correct. It was something like an eighth of an inch smaller than the truss rod I actually bought. 
that's going to cause me some issues. Uh, for now, I'm in blissful ignorance of this and I'm happily carrying on with this neck. So uh, let's see how I progress, at least in a positive light to begin with. And don't get me started on this red tape that you see on the truss rod just there. This has been another cause of problems for me. It, on the Stumac website, in half the pictures they have it on, in half they don't. In retrospect, I know now, you keep this red tape on, it's there to stop the thing from rattling. But when you use a router that's slightly too small for the, for the truss rod, you start to think of all sorts of ways of solving your problems, like taking off the red stuff when you're not supposed to. Anyway, that's not the ca catastrophic problem that's gonna happen, but I just wanted to let you know that all the while I'm doing this, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, the one thing I'd say is after a week of uncertainties and making small mistakes that compounded into a big mistake, I have learned a hell of a lot. I mean, honestly worth its weight in gold, the information that is <laughs> hopefully now the right way around in my head that will never go wrong again. Yeah, right, let's carry on. I think more and more that uh, this guitar making stuff is a mixture of sort of actual learning and theory and then obviously practical hands-on making. Now, not everything goes absolutely 100% right when you're making stuff by hand. Uh, and I've just done this truss rod um, channel, which I was reasonably confident it's the second time I'm doing it and I, you know, I have the right equipment, but you know it's not always perfect so i had my center line already on the wood and i thought i'd be doing the truss rod down that but these router blades let's see if i can uh, show you the router blade um, yeah maybe not let's see anyway these router blades don't have you know um, a spike or anything at the bottom like a a wood um, drill bit so you can't always see exactly in the middle I thought I'd got it exactly in the middle but I was a tiny bit to one side so I've had to use some mathematical wizardry or improvisation actually <laughs> to readjust the design of the neck over to one side so I had to recenter it all which um, I'm coming to terms with the fact that I'm gonna have to find lots of workarounds I imagine a lot of a lot of people doing this sort of thing end up with their own ways of, of doing it. This is what's so satisfying about, about guitar making and finding. You go from a plank of wood, a bit of hard work, figuring it out, some uh, sort of, um, let's say we say, puckering as you, uh, as you saw it out, and then suddenly you've got something that looks like a neck, so hopefully we get there in a minute. shaped headstock. It's a bit rough but I'm going to work on the sander for a minute. Obviously I'm not going to get too close to the lines. I've learned from my acoustic build where I got right up to the lines. I'm going to leave most of these sides. I'm just going to just, you know, neaten them up a bit. It's just nicer to look at something neater. But I'm not going to get too close to the line. I need to be able to centre that correctly or something. So there we go. And then I'll fit these as well. So at this stage I'm, I'm uh, pretty happy with how it's going. I've cut out the neck shape. Although I'm not going to show you, I work on refining it at the, at the, um, the uh, sort of uh, spindle sander, uh, which I really enjoy using that, but it's not so much fun for you guys to watch me doing loads of that. So now we're going to move back onto the, the piece of the, the top that I joined together. Uh, I'm going to cut out the shape and we've got the F-hole to do. I also realise at this point another sort of niggling error, mistake. I had hand thicknessed the main body blank, the one that's uh, got the cavities in it. And it's not exactly even everywhere, you know. So at this point, the top, if I lay it on it, is going to move around like this. So I need to sand off various bits. I honestly spent about two days doing this. In reality, you're just going to see it sort of after it's done, really. 
Um, I'm, I'm trying to speed up the build a little bit for you guys. There's, there's lots of cutting out, lots of sanding, lots of marking out. Uh, and I realize it's, it's too much to show you all the minute details at this point. You know, if, if on this channel, there's going to be lots of builds in the future, hopefully. So in between different builds, you'll see different aspects of how it's done, hopefully. So I can concentrate on little bits of each build. So let's, let's just sort of watch a bit more, see how it gets. And then after that, you're probably going to see what went wrong, uh, badly wrong. All right, so I've been working on the top here for a while, uh, but it's still a bit too thick. I've drawn the shape on now, so I'm only going to work on the the, um, the top of the guitar. That, that, that's the bit underneath. Um, I'm only going to work on it from its back side, and I'm going to plane that just as thin as I can to try and get um, down to size. At the moment, the, 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 the body and the top that will go on top add up to 1.87 inches and I need 1.75 inches uh, so a bit more work to do. Okay, so you know, things have been pro progressing quite nicely during the week. I figured out how you actually cut an F hole. Um, I haven't quite finished it yet, but I'm gonna refine that over and over again. I'll show you the end product at some point. But at the, you know, at this stage I had the, the body cut out and the cavities done. I had, uh, not all the cavities by the way, I need to figure out the, the electrics, how they're gonna go through it. The, the top is joined, it's thickness, it's cut out, the F hole is nearly done. The neck is cut out, the truss rod slot is done. Uh, all I really needed to do to progress further was to create uh, the right shape at the end of the truss rod. I've got a, a tool for that, it's called a reaming drill bit. It reams a nice hole in at the end. And then get the truss rod in and I could start working on uh, just doing some fret slots in the fretboard, cutting the fretboard to the right shape and I could stick it on. So I go back down to the workshop as normal, quite excited to carry on. And then, yeah, well, you'll see what happened. So before I drilled this hole in there, I'd had to actually chisel out um, some wood from the whole truss rod channel. So I was starting to wonder why if I bought the exact routing piece and the exact reaming tool, why the channel was just giving me so many problems. And I, hadn't, I couldn't quite figure it out. So I just thought I'll go ahead and um, that's what I'm doing here, getting that hole in there. Once that's done, I just need to try and get that truss rod in any which way I can I didn't pick the right way to do it so um, let me show you what I did and then we'll have a little chat <laughs> so it's uh yeah it doesn't it doesn't really reflect on me well but I honestly thought that if the truss rod wasn't quite fitting properly the best thing to do was to get this wooden mallet and just gradually smash the thing in there 
I've since learned that that's never the right technique for anything when you're working on a guitar. So, you know, I've learned that lesson so you don't have to. Uh, let, let's see what happens when you forcibly mallet an overly tight truss rod into a channel that's the wrong side. Uh, that little thumbs up that I gave there, that, that was because I thought I'd got it in just, you know, stroke of genius with that mallet and I thought it's all good. I'll never have to look at this truss rod again once the fret board is on. So what could possibly be the problem? Okay, it's finally time that you're gonna find out. Shit. Yeah, shit. That was the right word for it. I mean, um, it was obvious what I was doing there in retrospect. I was just driving a wedge down the middle of this truss rod cavity. But I was convinced I'd bought the right truss rod on the right route a bit, and so I thought, I must be doing something wrong, there's gotta be a way of getting this in there. I just never knew how you get the truss rod in. Obviously I've since learned that there's a wrong way to do it, and getting a great big mallet and smashing an overly sized truss rod into a channel is not going to end well for anyone. And honestly, it took away all my energy that moment I saw that. I haven't been down to the workshop even for four days. I'm just slowly coming back around to the idea of doing that again. I mean, you know, hopefully I'm going to make a hundred necks in my life for actual guitars. So making one extra one and honing my skills a bit better, is, is, is a good, it's not a bad thing. But sometimes you do something so stupid, you just stop and you go, I just, I, yeah, I'm done. I'm done for the day, for the week, for the weekend. So, yeah, really, that's, that's the low point uh, so far. All the other mistakes I've made have been fixable and have kept me going, you know, the positivity is always there. And it's Monday morning now, and um, I was gonna go down to the workshop, and instead I'm editing and making this video because I'm still not ready. I think I think tomorrow I'll be ready to go back down and just carry on and, and uh, as if nothing happened. Um, make a new neck, I'm waiting for a new piece of maple for the neck. Um, and you saw on the board earlier, you can see what the third guitar I've started making. I'm making an SG Junior. I also told you I would let you know all the hardware that's going on this guitar. Uh, and although it's all ordered, I haven't received it all yet, so I want to wait until I've received it. So hopefully in the next video, which will be next week, um, the bridge, the tuners, the pickups, those are really exciting, and the other various bits and pieces that I've got to go on this guitar, I want to show you what they all are. But yeah, for everyone that sort of said, oh, you know, it's pretty brave of you to make a guitar, for the first time I actually really felt it, you know what, it's hard, it's really hard making it, making a guitar because the process is just so long and there are so many skills involved. And when you make a drastic error like that, you just, it just all becomes a bit much for a while. I'm just being very honest here. But the desire to carry on hasn't diminished, it's just I needed to rebuild my mental energy just to go again. And to forgive myself really for that mistake, the stupid mistake that I made, um, but yeah. I'll be back on back on it tomorrow and hopefully in the video next week we'll have made some progress um, so yeah I'll see you then oh and later this week I'm going to be recording uh, one of my normal videos my normal music gear videos uh, because most of you are here to watch that so um, yeah I'm looking forward to that as well and I'll see you soon